Hi, my name's Tom Bellardi, a.k.a. Botany Boy. I'm sitting outside here today in my yard enjoying some of these native orchids that I grow just for fun. This is uh, Dendrobium maniliformi, uh, a pretty widespread species of epiphytic orchid in Japan that's becoming increasingly more rare because of overcollection. Uh, the normal flower type on this is uh, kind of a the star shape with a pale pink to white flower. Occasionally they can be this kind of a yellow flush type flower and uh, more rare you'll see the darker flowers such as this guys on here. Um, occasionally also there will be rare or, or odd flower types like this okina which is a naturally occurring plant not a, a hybrid. Another group that's very popular with Japanese growers is uh, the Kalanthe orchids. These are called ebine in Japanese, which means shrimp root, because someone believed that the root, the underground stem, looks something like a shrimp's body. Um, today we'll be going to two different shows in the Fukuoka City area focusing on native orchids. One will be uh, totally about uh, ebine, and the other show should be fairly eclectic, showing ebine and uh, probably lots of dendrobium manila for me, maybe some other dendrobium species, and uh, we'll see what's there. So why don't you come along with me and we'll go ahead and see what they got. The first show is an annual event hosted by the Western Japan Ebine Orchid Group. These expert growers have created an amazing array of flower types from just a handful of native species. G. ebine, C. discolor, Ki ebine, C. siboldi, Kirishima ebine, C. aristulifera, Nyoi ebine, C. izu insularis, and finally Saru ebine, C. tricarinata. In the early days, plants were simply taken from the wild, many of which were naturally occurring hybrids. Starting in the 1980s, artificially propagated plants grown from seed using sterile culture techniques became the norm, and hybridization became increasingly complex much like in other orchid genera such as Paphiopedilum or Phalaenopsis. Some Calanthe are kept as pure species such as the C. Izu insularis. Though lovely, it is grown primarily for its floral scent, hence its name Nioi ebine, meaning fragrant shrimp root. Today this species is virtually extinct in the wild. Another species that is commonly grown in its pure form is Ki ebine, C. siboldi. These plants are among some of the largest growing of the Japanese Calanthe with wild specimens sometimes standing nearly a meter tall. Their flowers have a lovely sweet odor which matches their candy-like appearance perfectly. Due to the complexity of hybridization, the plants we see today are hard to classify anymore, though some remain primary hybrids. Chief among these are the purple and white-flowered kozu hybrids, a product of crossing C. discolor with C. izu insularis. They are striking flowers with a tendency towards being deeply colored, a pleasant trait from combining these species. Another primary group are called the Takane hybrids. Strictly speaking, these contain only C. siboldi and C. discolor blood, though other species may be mixed in. Though variable, the classic flower type is a broad, highly ribbed lip that is yellow in color, while the remaining flower parts are a rich shade of brown. That said, flower color can range from pure green to greenish yellow to even pure orange. In previous years, these were much more popular than they are today. Another group that is fairly easy to spot are those made with saru ebine, C. tricarinata. Generalizing again, the sepals and petals flare out in a star pattern while the lip is highly frilled and relatively compact. The color pattern is often bicolored, with the lip typically being purple and the rest of the flower green. Plants that have a lot of C. tricarinata influence tend to have slightly smaller flowers. Virtually all other hybrids fall within the Satsuma group. These are hybrids of C. discolor, C. siboldi, and C. aristulifera. Flower color ranges from pure white to brick red, purple brown, yellow, pink, orange, and even green tones. Again, due to the complexity of hybridization these days, flower variation within this group is extreme. Flowers can be nearly solid color, bicolor, or multicolored. Some have characteristics that either resemble the dainty elegance of C. aristulifera or the more chunky flower form of C. discolor. Others are more influenced by their Takane blood. And still others seem to defy description. In Kyushu, this group is by far the most popular type these days. The wall of winners is always at the front of the room. 
These plants are purposely grown to be large in stature and are either single or double stemmed. In general, Japanese growers do not seem to like to keep Calanthe in large clumps, though certainly they are genetically capable of that. The size of the plant can be regulated by increasing the pot size. The larger the pot, the larger the plant. Before we head off to the next show, let's enjoy a few more of these wonderful hybrid Calanthe. The second show was held the following weekend in a smaller city to the east and was put on by a local orchid club. Many different types of orchids were on display including Calanthe, Dendrobium maniliforme, and a select few others. A variety of woodland plants were sprinkled in here and there as well. Calanthe dominated the top shelves and Dendrobium maniliforme the lower ones. The range of types of Calanthe were similar to those of the previous show, but also included an old type of Calanthe ciboldi known as Ocon that flushes new growth very pale, almost white, and matures to a lime green. This was a highly prized plant in the past, fetching many thousands of dollars per growth. Dendrobium maniliforme comes in shades of white, pink, purple, and orange yellow. There are many hundreds of types by now. Select forms are called choseran, meaning long life orchid. The form Nizon is one of the more famous purple flowered types. Truly deep purple flowered forms are most likely of hybrid origin. Other flowers are more yellow in color, and some of these as well are probably hybrids. Leaf color and shape are also important in this species. Some have almost round leaves, while others can be highly variegated. Variegation can be both white or yellow, and sometimes even have purple highlights. The flower parts range from being more rounded to pointed, and some have odd shapes. As you can see from these plants, Choseidon are amazingly variable in form, color, and habit. Other orchids seen at the show were odd forms of two common species, Gudiera schlichtendeliana and Spiranthes sinensis. G. schlichtendeliana is normally a green-leafed plant with a white net pattern over the leaves, similar to the North American species G. pubescens. Some specimens show extreme variegation, as these demonstrate. Japanese growers love anything unusual, even if it isn't truly beautiful, with rare forms fetching prices into the hundreds of dollars. Spiranthes sinensis is a common roadside weed in Japan, normally having simple green leaves. At the show there were a number of variegated types. There even was this dwarf growing form that was in flower already. Normally this species flowers from late June to mid-July. Before we end, let's have a look at a few more plants at this show.
We're going to finish today's video on the mountains near Fukuoka City. Next to me here is a wild growing Calanthe discolor. If you enjoyed today's video, please remember to like it and to subscribe to the channel. And also please visit us at botanyboy.org. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.